while since we streamed Ronda. What's going on? Yeah, it has. Um, life, um, quarantine life. What else, dude? Making what? lots of bread. You're making so much bread to the point where yeah. it's like unavoidable now. We have got to, uh, we've got to make a video of you making bread. Yeah, and please get Jesse into making bread because I have like so much starter and I just hate like throwing it away you know what i mean because it's called like discard i have made so many sourdough pancakes this week which are amazing and delicious ah here's i don't know it's funny because without fail whenever you play wow it's like oh my god ronda plays wow and it's <laughs> like this is like your game more like this in pokemon right yeah i was playing pokemon all morning um hell yeah wow and pokemon are my two go-to's and i just hit my tooth on that metal canteen ow Every time I do that, I feel like that's the end of my tooth. I have, like, a fear of chipping teeth. Anyway, let me. <clears throat> speaking of, let me get to this real quick. What the legend of Mechagon? Mechagon. I came as soon as I heard. A mysterious fall has been discovered in Tar... Tear guard. Tear guard. <laughs> Centuries ago, the last king of the gnomes, King Mechagon, led his followers in search of a mist mythical land of technology. He left no clue as to where he was headed, and over time his legend faded into history. This fault could be the first step to discovering King Mechagon's Mecha true fate. I must examine it firsthand. Meet me there, champion. I could use your assistance. Meet Tinker Master Overspark outside the mysterious vault. You will receive two gold. Okay. Let's do it. Let's head south it's towards Jenning, Kenning's Lodge. Oh, yeah. So I should talk about our charity today. We are raising money once again for Feeding America. But they're feeding everybody that, you know, lost their jobs, can't buy food, want to be able to stay in quarantine. Whereas I'm sitting here going on about how I ate too much sourdough. God, I sound like an asshole. <laughs> this fault screams of ancient gnomish tech. I believe this could be the key that leads us to King Mechagon. I can't risk putting myself in danger, though, so you'll lead the way into the vault. Well, what are you waiting? What are we waiting for? Let's see what's inside. Enter the vaults. You guys are so awesome. We gotta think of a donation gimmick for the stream. This is a monumental success. The device appears to be fully operational. I, I will say your name in Gnomish. <laughs> for every donation of $10, I will say your name in Gnomish. Laura Christine just donated ten dollars. So we'll Laura Christine, her. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sierra Bay. Sierra Bay, thank you so much. <laughs> Steve Reed Senior. Steve Reed Senior, thank you so much. <laughs> Chris Souza. Chris Souza, you're the best. <laughs> Benjamin Collins Junior. Benjamin Collins Junior, <laughs> you're so great. <laughs> April Serrato. April Serrato! You're amazing! <laughs> That's it. That's it thus far. Alright, you guys. $10 yeah. for the gnome! <laughs> no one cracks yourself, anyone up with more with the gnomish than you. <laughs> like, who is this gnome character? You've got to play a gnome now. Like, I know. <laughs> well, you're the writer. Write me a gnome. Alright, what, what are the gnome names? Alright, here we go. Aaron Cassander, $55. Aaron Cassander, thank you so much. Michelle Anderson, we see her often, $15. Michelle Anderson, welcome back and thank you. <laughs> Christina Menefee, she's in here often, $10. Christina Menefee, 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 what? Menefee. Menefee, you have a beautiful name. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for helping Feed America. Yeah, right. Christina. Christina Menafeed America. <laughs> Christina Menafeed America. So oh, many people are saying for the horde in the chat. Oh well, that's that's nice. I, I appreciate your 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 horde pride. You know, I I I admittedly never see that kind the kind of pride from the alliance that I see from the horde, but I just like their races and start areas so much more. It's just <laughs> hordes depressing, and I just kind of like. Rivendale. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like the woods and elves. I just like elves. $357 raised because of the rowdy ones and because of your gnomish 
wonderfulness, Rhonda. I'm sure it's just the rowdy ones and their generosity, but I will convince myself that the gnome made it all happen. The gnome is making it happen. Josh Allison, another $5. Josh Allison, you're the best. What am I doing out here? Time to vanish, because I'm a goddamn rogue. What was my job? Meet up with Gila Crossfire. I gotta go back to Boralis. Okay. Fane came all the way over here just for some gnome drama. Uh, Robert some... Thomas in the chat room goes, Rhonda, I love you so much. It's awesome that you play PC games. What other games do you play? On the PC? And... Yeah. Well, once I started playing Mortal Kombat on the PC, I honestly like can't go back to the PS4. I had to go back to the PS4 the tournament, and I'm like, what is this? This is not I by power. Um, so yeah, it kind of ruined me. And Horizon Zero Dawn is about to come out on PC soon, which, you know what, I will start all over again. Um, I don't think you have any idea. I mean, you well, no, you do, because remember when we switched from your PC for Mortal Kombat to the PS4? Like, imagine mm -hmm. what that's going to look like. For Horizon? Oh, I know. God. Can you talk a little bit about your rogue? Because normally you've been a hunter? I started out as a hunter, and it was actually Vin who suggested. He was like, I can't do the mumble growl very well. He was like, you'd be a really good rogue. You know, you seem like a roguey type of person. I can't do it at all. <laughs> you seem like a roguey type of person. You really <laughs> seem like you'd be a really good rogue. It just seems like your type thing. I, yeah, but um, he suggested it, and then I was like, "Well, I've already been like running around being a hunter for the first time ever. Like, let me figure this out." And then I tried being uh, a rogue, and it's freaking awesome, and it totally is my favorite kind of thing. And it, what it actually made me go to the rogue side was I was just questing somewhere, but it was just such a pain in the ass. And I was like, I just really want to sneak by these people. And like, I was playing rogues, like, I actually played a... ventured on the Horde. I was playing a Blood Elf rogue. Um, named Crimza. I really like her. I think I leveled her up to like, level 60 or something. But I was in this one area, and actually this expansion, where I was just like, oh, I'm so over it. I just want to pay for the boost and have a rogue and live that rogue life. And I've never turned back. Yeah. B. Zagati donated $10, but wait for it, Rhonda. Give it to me in a, in a dwarf voice. Oh, God. I need to hear it to do it. Um, what was it? Uh, Frank B. Zagati. Frank B. Zagati! <laughs> That's my dwarf. Oh yeah, I need a pet. I need a pet. What are you, what are you doing? What I got? Sorry, Mischief. We already had you. Electric alligator dinosaur with tusks. What are you? <laughs> that just kept on going. You're like electrified alligator with tusks. <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> dinosaur. Dinosaur alligator. alligator reptile crocodile with tusks and a rat friend. There's just so much to this game. I've been playing it for years, and I still feel like I know nothing. Yeah, and, and it, like, changes, you know? So it's just so much. Yeah, there's, like, you have to be, like, a lifer. But the cool thing is the community is, like, really, like, open, you know? There's not a lot of gatekeepers. You know, there's not, like, you fucking casual. People just want to play with other people. Ultimately. Yeah. And I think that's why it's done so well and has so much staying power and it hasn't fizzled out, you know? People just want to play. What were some other MMOs that began, began around, around the time of World of Warcraft and didn't make it? Well, we're, ooh, man. I mean, a billion, all of which I've played. Um... Well, ask the chat room. Do you guys remember any MMOs that were, oh my god, this guy is like totally giving me the business right now. Oh, it's because my daggers! I didn't even poison my daggers. City of Heroes was super fun. Actually, I really enjoyed that one. Why do you think it didn't make it? Uh, I remember it being, like, really fun. Like, I feel like if, if City of Heroes had, like, maybe come out a few years later with all the Marvel and, and everything blowing up right now, like, comic books are way more in the culture. Oh. Uh, maybe it was a little ahead of its time. But I really enjoyed it. And also, MMOs were so much harder. Remember when you played uh, Vanilla WoW? It's like, yeah. Dude, I... what was going on with the people in the early 2000s? They all had so much time. I don't know. Times were simpler then. 
<laughs> what do you think are the main reasons that um, things died? Well, uh, gamers' tastes change, and it feels like MMOs have kind of become smaller. Uh, like they're they're not as quite as prevalent. Like there was a point in time in gaming history where you could actually sustain all of these different games, you know. Um, and it doesn't seem like over the years like that happened. Like like I guess when I said like in 2004 when everyone was playing an MMO, it was so much a crazy time. Like I loved Final Fantasy XI, and I feel like the reason World of Warcraft is stuck around, even though it's it's very user friendly and easy and i can get in and get out really fast now which is what i need as an adult it still slightly bums me out because it feels like there's less of a community but honestly would i be able to put in as much time to like really like back in the day probably not i don't know man we're all getting old i gotta change my boots these are not hot Rhonda, got I got particles I, on my boots hear this pitch okay okay you come back to WWE. Wait, wait for it. As a gnome. No one will know I'm coming. <laughs> Kyle says that you should still do WWE's Rowdy Ronda, but only talk in the gnome, gnome voice from now on. <laughs> and don't and don't uh, like bring any attention to it. Don't bring any attention to it. <laughs> yeah. Imagine you like going full heel in the gnome voice. Oh my god, it's so funny. Hey, Becky. <laughs> hey Becky, you, you never pinned me for three. You paid off those refs with God knows what. Dude, tables are for bitches in the gnome voice. Tables are for bitches. <laughs> give me a bunch of outrageous. I want the chat room to give me a bunch of outrageous things to say in the gnome voice, so that if I'm ever quoted saying them, whenever they cite the quote, they have to listen to the gnome. Ryan Hill says, "Don't be, do the don't be a DNB speech in the gnome voice." Oh, it's already been done, and I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't remember it word for word. There's a certain name I had my mom tell me for a girl that just does jack shit for a living, takes pictures on Instagram, fucks millionaires in order to keep her stomach full or empty. I don't know what she's eating. And it's a do-nothing bitch. That bitch don't cook, that bitch don't clean, that bitch don't work. She's just a fucking consumer that fucks millionaires. And she has 120,000 followers. What the fuck, people? <laughs> it's nothing but selfies. <laughs> it's nothing but selfies. <laughs> it's a new selfie every five minutes. I love, I want to, I, I picture this gnome like pacing around a room, just like throwing his hands. <laughs> Reclaim, I repair, you what recycle. is considered Please one of the greatest the of pro request. wrestling speeches of all time. And if you want to, then by all means do it. You can start with the second paragraph in the leak that I just sent. It would be amazing. You don't have to, though. <laughs> Alrighty. I really hope that Goldust isn't offended by this. I don't have to say a lot more about the way I feel about Ric Flair. No respect. No honor. There's no honor among thieves in the first place. He put hard times on Dusty Rose and his family. You don't know what hard times are, daddy. Hard times are when the textile workers around this country are out of work and got four or five kids and can't pay their wages, can't buy their food. Hard times are when the automakers are out of work and they tell them, go home. And hard times are when a man has worked a dead job 30 years, 30 years. They give him a watch, kick him in the butt and say, hey, a computer took your place, buddy. That's hard times. That's hard times. And Ric Flair, you put a hard time, you put hard times on this country, but taking Rusty Roads out. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. That's hard times, and we all had hard times together. I admit, I don't look like the athletes are today. Are today supposed to look? My belly's just a little big. My hand is just a little big. But brother, I am bad, and they know I'm bad. And there were two bad people. One was John Wayne, and he's dead, brother. And the other one is right here. Nature boy, Rick Flair, the world's heavyweight title belongs to these people. I'm going to reach out right now. I want you at home to know my hand is touching your hand. For this gathering of the biggest bad people in this country, and it's yours all over the world. Now reach out, because the love that was given me 
And this time I will repay you now because I will be the next world heavyweight champion on this Hot Times Blues Dusty Rose Tour 85. And Ric Flair and your Boy let me leave you with this. One way to hurt Ric Flair is to take what he cherishes more than anything in the world. And that's his heavyweight world. Sorry, this isn't more gaming on the stream. And Ric Flair and your Boy, let me leave you with this. One way to hurt Ric Flair is to take what he cherishes more than anything in the world. That's the world's heavyweight title. I will take it. I've been there twice. This time, when I take it, Daddy, I'm going to take it for you. The fans, that's in parentheses. Let's get it for it. Don't let me down now because I came back for you. Now that man up there that died 10, 12 years ago that nobody got the opportunity to see a real world champion. I'm proud of you and thank God I have you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so good. We have raised $1,065. That round of applause is for you guys. And over fifty dollars in stars. Yes. Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, everybody. You are going to just help so many people. And Chris McGarrett in the chat room goes, Rhonda, you should hit up Matt Mercer and see if you can get in a few games of D and D and the crew on Critical Role, which is like a really popular D and D podcast. Because uh -huh. you playing a gnome character. You want me to be a gnome on Dungeons and Dragons? You would have to be a gnome for sure. Okay. You look at the idol of flashy craft, find a lover for your lover, then look no further. If you bring me the ink and I'll cram it on your ride if you catch my drift. But seriously, if you found any sweet colors out there, bring them to me and I'll add them to the choices of colors available for your silly waggy TV. Okay. Right back. Booze. No one likes a boring cat. I can add flair and color to your mechano cat mount, making the proverbial cats meow. Bring any paint vials you find to me, and I will find the, add them to the choices of colors available for your mechano cats. Ricky Barker says that he's disappointed that Rhonda went ally when her favorite DBZ character is Vegeta. I don't know what that means. Explain to me. Uh, so Vegeta is the most complex and amazing character in Dragon Ball Z, and he started out as a bad guy, and that he was kind of a good guy, but he still dabbled in the badness. But he's really good at heart, but he won't admit to it. Wow, Tanya donated another $150. Thanks, Tanya! You're the best! You're absolutely the best! Wow! You fed so many people today. Incredible. Thanks. You are incredible. Jason's right for once. Oh. oh. Sorry. The stream. The stream. I'm just. I just. That's that's our rapport that we've established on the stream. <laughs> Everything's your fault, and I'm mean to you. But then every time I like outside the stream, I'd really try to be super nice. You are super nice. Like. <laughs> Rowdy Rhonda comes out when the cameras are on. I just can't. I can't help it. Like, even, even we had personal conversations where I was like, are you cutting a promo on me? Right? I can't help it. I totally... I'm, in, I'm into it. When Rowdy Rana comes out. It's just, uh... Playing WoW. Ooh, what if I jump on Twitch? You want to jump on? I'm on for another half hour. I jump on, what if I jump on Twitch? How do we need that? There's too uh, much at this point. There's too much what? There's too much to be done at this point, but tell, but Trash can play with you. Yeah, babe, like, jump on. All of the chat room has been asking about him. Say hey, buddy. Can uh, you tell Trav that we've raised twelve hundred dollars? Babe, we've re raised twelve hundred dollars for Feed in America. What? By we, I mean they. I have done nothing except for be a gnome. Can you tell Trav that you love him in your gnome voice? He like left the room. I love you so much, darling. You're the love of my life. My moon and stars and starry night. Guys, I, I, I really need to bring this up to you, and I don't want to cut you off, Trav. But listen to this. Jeff Jones donated $100. Trav, can you call out Jeff Jones in a gnome voice? A gnome voice? Can you give me an example of a gnome voice? Rhonda, can you give him an example? What is his name again? Jeff Jones. His name's Jeff Jones, babe. 
I just had some Genoa salami and cheese and cracked this one. Oh, that's what happened to the rest of my snack pack. Thanks. Oh my God. I didn't think I, I was going to finish that off. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Jeff Jones. Don't eat 100 bucks. One more time, babe. Jeff Jones, you're the best! <laughs> <laughs> I can't go, I can't go that high, high, though. You can do a real low, low like this. Jeff Jones! <laughs> Thank, Thank you for the $100, $100 donation. donation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, now Gary Mancuso donated $95. Can you give me an easier last name, please? No! Uh, Gary Mancuso is the best! He donated $95 and you gotta say it! Awesome! Say it! Say it! Are you doing it again? I'll cover up my mic! Gary Mancuso is Guys, we've raised over 16... Well, more money's coming in. I can't even keep up with it. Hey, if you guys donate $10 or more before the stream ends, travel Nomeo. You'll get to Nomeo real hard. Give us a name. Give us a name. Jason. Uh, Jenna Hardcore. Brian Dobbins, you're the best. Tribe's doing the dance. Well, no, he can't see you on your cam, but he's doing, oh, yeah. he's doing the Janai dance. It's <laughs> going. Oh, oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, guys. Mwah, 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 mwah. Stay ready, my friends. Thank you for donating. You're all the best. See you next time. Mwah, 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 mwah. We're gonna finish story mode in Mortal Kombat. Bye. Mwah.